Hey everybody, this video is all about the world's most popular headphones by Odyssey. Now Odyssey makes audiophile grade headphones that cost anywhere from a few hundred dollars and upwards to thousands of dollars. But it's the LCD X, XC and the LCD 3 that have been the brand's most successful all coming in under $2,000 a pair. Now Audio Vice, we love it when high-end brands use trickle down tech to make their less expensive gear better. So in this comparison, we'll put these three models into the ring and let them duke it out to explore why these are loved by so many around the world. We'll also weigh the pros and cons of open back versus closed back and discuss which one you should choose. So if you've been on the fence about one of these best sellers, you'll have everything needed to make your decision easier. Now let's get into it. In our Odyssey LCD2 review, we went over the company's backstory and how it all started in a garage in Orange County, California. Now the LCD2 is the headphone that started it all and this also inspired the higher end models in this lineup. So there are a few key technologies that are directly inherited from the LCD2. For one, when it comes to planar magnetic tech, the name of the game is in making the diaphragm as thin as possible. Essentially, the lighter and stronger the diaphragm, the faster it can move, pushing and pulling the air around to create sound. The LCD2 was the first to implement a very large 106 millimeter ultra thin film that produces accurate deep sounding bass with near zero distortion. Essentially, this ultra thin diaphragm is less than two microns thin, thinner than a strand of human hair positioned between magnets. And this lightweightiness allows it to achieve true pistonic back and forth motion at extreme velocity. All of these high end models inherit this tech. They all reproduce the full spectrum of music and beyond from 10 Hertz to 50 kilohertz, which is both below and above human hearing. You also get Odyssey's special phaser weight guide tech which eliminates diffraction inside the ear cup chamber for more precise and detailed sound. However, where these begin to evolve from the LCD2 is in the magnetic design itself. Now, the LCD2 is unique in the way the magnets are offset or staggered to equalize the force acting on the diaphragm, which helps it move uniformly. This is one of the ways Odyssey lowers distortion to near zero, but the trade-off sacrifices some efficiency. The most popular high-end models on this list all use a stacked or non-staggered magnetic structure and some even use a special proprietary uniforce voice coil to get back the efficiency which helps all parts of the diaphragm experience the same force for truly pistonic motion this improves the tiniest micro details you hear even more with the ultra low distortion people love about the LCD2 when you step up to one of these. As for the differences between these best sellers, they mostly differ in their impedances, operating principle and materials, which all affects the weight on your head, the ergonomic application, sound profile and price point. As best sellers, they are some of the most comfortable on the market with thick, beefy ear pads and headbands with suspension straps to distribute the weight evenly, making the ear cups practically hug your head. This is one of the key reasons why these are the best selling and most popular Odyssey makes, but they do fall into two categories open back or closed back. So we're gonna quickly dive into each of these elements and compare the selection of materials, their best use cases, and their design benefits to help you decide which high-end model is right for you. One of the coolest things about Odyssey headphones is their neutral sound profile. Whether you like listening critically or just like getting lost in the music, these can excel in either listening style. However, if you've been on the fence, we'll be sure to point out the ones best suited for your preferred listening application. We use a Cord Mojo 2, which is a pocketable DAC headphone amp with plenty of power to drive even the most power hungry model on this list. Mojo 2 also has two headphone jacks and a very transparent sound, perfect for A-B testing and revealing the full potential of these high performance headphones. We listened to a lot of music genres, but the ones that stood out the most had more natural instrumentation like jazz, classical, rock, and funk. But if you're in any kind of electronic music production like trance or EDM, you'll definitely appreciate the deep resolute 10 Hertz bass all of these produce. Starting with the LCD X open back. Overall, I can hear a very resolute separation of details with the spacious soundstage that let me hear the music more like the artist intended it. And this is why I think the LCD X is really useful for listening more critically. From top to bottom, these are extremely linear. 
You might expect a planter driver to have a top end emphasis, but not so with these. The top end does extend out way beyond the range of human hearing, but is just super sweet in its presentation with vocals that sounded very natural in the mix. When I heard a deep bass instrument, it was full, rich, and it reached incredibly low. The ear cups are constructed with lightweight aluminum, which makes this one the lightest and most comfortable of the three. Even after four hours of constant listening, I never felt any sense of fatigue, and this makes sense being that it's built by hand for use in professional studios where mastering engineers need to listen critically with luxury comfort all day. If you want to hear its big, full, and neutral presentation, check out an intimate performance by Tyler Childers called Shake the Frost. It's performed live on the air for the Red Barn radio album, and Tyler's vocal and plucky acoustic banjo just come alive with a realism that easily felt like we were being serenaded by the band in the room. It's just really cool. Up next, we have the LCD XC Closed Back. This one shares the same drivers and basic construction with the LCD X, which gives this a similar level of detail and transparency, but in a closed back design. The backs of the ear cups are closed off with a lightweight carbon, which provides a deeply personal and highly private listening experience. And as a closed back, this one provided the best isolation that locked sound in, preventing it from leaking out and letting everyone around me know what I was listening to. The closed back ear cups added a few extra ounces of weight, but the headband suspicion system did a fantastic job distributing the tiny bit of extra weight. A cool thing about the XC's larger ear cups is you get more resolute bass since the resonant energy in the chamber goes down as size goes up. And this is similar to how a cello is bigger than a violin because it needs to resonate at lower frequencies. As far as sound profile, the XC had a slight lift in bass response compared to the X between 120 and 200 hertz, which made electric bass sound slightly more defined and up close in the presentation compared to the X open back version. If you really want to push the XC's deep resolute bass, you will really want to check out Faith by the Weekend. Even though the XC retains the X's neutral sound signature, it's a great example of just how well defined and deep the bottom end weight performs. While I prefer listening with open backs like the LCD X, for audiophiles or mastering engineers who need to work on long flights or even remotely in public settings, the XC to my ear is a neutral sounding headphone that translates deeper resolute bass like nothing else in its class. All right, our last world's most popular Odyssey headphone is the LCD3 open back. At 110 ohms, you can expect to squeeze every last drop of performance from this once you connect it with a good DAC headphone amp. We used a Chord Mojo 2 for our on-the-go listening test, but since this one has a higher impedance and an open back design, it's best used at home. We connected ours to a Cambridge Audio DAC Magic 200M DAC amp, and this allowed us to drive it to peak performance. For those familiar with the LCD2, the 3 has a mid-range that is slightly less recessed, giving it a warmer tonality in the mid-range and a slightly smoother and more musical top end compared to its LCD2 predecessor. The 3 has natural Zebrano wood rings, which is an African hardwood usually selected for musical instruments for its full sound and dark harmonic overtones. The finish features a striking pattern of narrow streaks of dark brown stripes that are reminiscent of a zebra. The voice coils in the LC3 are actually longer than those in the LC2 and the others in this comparison, which noticeably improved the detailed retrieval we could pick out in the presentation giving this one the most hyper-realistic soundstage that was almost holographic in AB comparisons. If you want to experience the three's immersive detail retrieval, you have to check out Prince's funky 1979 hit song, I Want to Be Your Lover. It's pretty well known that Prince was a whiz in the studio and played many of the instruments on his albums. So this recording is full of Prince's multi-instrumental talents and there's a lot of musical layering in the mix. It would have been very easy for me to just relax and get lost in all the sounds if I wanted to. However, there is a bass line the bridge played by a synth and a clavichord that are harmonically blended to sound like a single instrument. The harmonic content in this section was so rich with all the instruments combined, it's easily mistaken as an unrecognizable instrument on other headphones. But on the three, details were presented with so much depth and accuracy, at times it sounded like I could almost pick the soundstage apart layer by layer. This allowed me to choose what I wanted to sink my teeth into or just sit back, relax, and enjoy the presentation. 
All right, all of these has its price point in the lineup of best sellers. They all are priced respectively to fit in the way you listen to music, but I think any headphone by Odyssey will be an impressive statement piece in a collection of high-end audio gear. So which one do you choose? If you're on the fence, I think the high-performance planar magnetic tech and neutral linear sound of the LCD X is a fantastic value for the money. This model is highly detailed, revealing the most subtle nuances of world-class musicianship like a microscope, and yet the X is just so musical. You can relax, kick back, and get lost in all the details if that's your style. On the other hand, if you're looking for a closed back headphone with nearly the same transparent sound and fantastic detail retrieval as the X, there is not another high-end closed back that will allow you to hear music the way the artist intended it at this price point. Like the X that that inspired them, the comfort was made to be listened to for hours on end. The closed back ear cups added a tiny bit of extra weight, but this was hardly noticeable, and they are tuned specifically for the XE. To my ears, the XC performed just slightly better on bass heavy music with deep bass that was more upfront and personal in the soundstage. For the money, I think the XC offers something really special most people have never experienced in a closed back for this price. Finally, anyone who listens to detail-oriented music that's organic and natural, we give the LCD3 open back a solid thumbs up for the luxury high-end music lover. It suited almost any style of music, but the 3's true potential does come alive when paired with a good headphone amp at home. When considering the price points of Odyssey's most expensive luxury models like their flagship LCD5, I think the wide open soundstage and holographic realism is impressive. If you are a casual listener who wants to get immersed in your music and you prefer subtle dynamics that draw you in deeper, then with a good DAC headphone amp, the three delivered powerful bass, a clear smooth top end, an accurate warm sounding mid-range, and a luxurious and well thought out design. I really liked it. All right, that concludes our comparison on the world's most popular Odyssey headphones. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this, be sure to give it a like and also check out the playlist section on our YouTube channel to easily find all the content you're looking for. If you have any questions about the headphones in this lineup, check out our other individual reviews where we deep dive into each one. Links to those video reviews are in the description. You can also give us a call, chat with one of our experts at audioadvice.com or just stop into one of our award-winning showrooms. We'll be happy to help you out and find the right Odyssey headphone for you. We'll see you next time.